So good morning friends. Before you today I am going to produce my second video. And as you know that I am a just COVID-19. My hair has also grown like a coronavirus but even then I am before you to produce one video upon one topic which is known as feminism which is a part of your UG semester 6 syllabus and also in PG2 you have to study it. I will try to make this video into two parts. This part will be clearing all the concepts till feminist criticism talks about and after that what are the different schools of feminism, Marxist criticism, Marxist feminism and likewise I will produce another video for that that I am making it very clear before you. Now what is feminism? If I try to begin a discussion I would like to quote I myself have never been able to find out precisely what feminism is all about. I only know that other people call me a feminism whenever I express sentiments that differentiate me from a doormat or a prostitute. This is a quotation by Rebecca West. And Rebecca West writes that if I express my opinions different from prostitute or a doormat, I am labeled as a feminist. What kind of rebel? See what is the status, what is the agony which is going there. Now I would like to draw your attention towards the second quotation. It is by Simone de Beauvoir. She writes, one is not born, but rather becomes a woman. One is not born, rather becomes a woman. Go back to your family member. And if you recall any female member of your family, you just try to see how do we, all the family members, try to make that energy into a female. This is where uh, I am going to discuss in detail where the crux issue is. Now after discussing this, I would like to discuss four terms before you which is generally taken for granted by the university students and even I have seen that many of us do not have the clear cut idea and those terms that you always take it for granted are female, then feminine, then feminist and then there is feminism. So female is nothing but a biological status, you know, that is a sex, that is a biological. The second feminine is nothing but a social construct. This social construct which is being talked about by Simon de Beauvoir, one is not born but rather become a woman. We make a girl into a woman. We make a sexually that we label as female, we make her a woman. And this is where the society plays the role. Now where this feminist, as you know that this suffix ist, wherever this suffix ist is there, we are talking about activist. Activist who talks about the equal rights, who talks about the equal rights. And feminism, feminism, once again this suffix ism talks about the ideology, an ideology that talks about the equality of women and justice for them. So if I belong to this ideology, I am talking about feminism. So understanding this basic concept, I would like to pull further that there are two basic principles upon which this concept feminism is revolving around. And what are those two basic axioms? or you can say the principles. First principle says that there is a gender difference and there is a gender difference where there is inequality inequality between men and women and 
The second principle if talks about that if there is inequality, this inequality is not biological, but rather it is produced by cultural cultural construction of gender of gender differences. So this two principles work behind this feminism theory. One talks about the gender difference and that gender difference leads to inequality. And the second principle says that if there is inequality, that is because not by the biological necessity, but produced by cultural construction of gender differences. If there is gender difference, we need to study why it's so. Now, what is the agenda? What is the agenda of feminism? So, what is the agenda? Agenda is very clear that knowing this gender equality, if there is gender inequality, we have to bring change in it. Agenda is nothing but very crystal clear. If there be any inequality, we have to bring change. We have to bring change in this. If we have to reform the society, we have to bring the change and we must have to work upon the equality of rights for women. Now, friends, this agenda and after that, now where can we are, you know, we can talk about what is the aims. The aims of this study is to study the ways in which cultural representations what is the aims because this difference that we call in general is represented by cultural representations we have to study the ways in which these cultural representations say like literature like film like other visual mediums, how they, all these cultural representations, how they have gone for the suppression and oppression of women in society through social, political, economic literatures. They have always talked about and favored and advocated about the oppression and suppression of women in society. In fact, these cultural representation has to go under a paradigm shift. We have to look back how have they differentiated. So if I go back to know these cultural differences, we must have to go into the historical perspectives and details. So knowing the aims, we have to see the historical background. The historical background. Now, we know that there was nothing as such a concept of, of feminism before 1960. In the United States of America, the women lobbies, the intellectuals, just they gathered together and they raised their voices for three things. One was the, needless to say, equality. Another was freedom. And third was to transform, the voice was to transform what? To transform patriarchal notions. They had to, they had resulted for bringing equality, freedom and transformation in patriarchal notions. There was nothing as such matriarchal. They said that all the religious scriptures so far have been produced by male. There is no contribution of female. And such were their voices that they said, okay, we are there in the society, but even in Europe, there was no right even to cast votes. They had no rights for franchise. There was many other rights which were there, not privileged enough to have those rights with them. Now, they were content with the private world. They were content with the domestic world. They were wives, they were caretakers, they were homemakers, but there was no leaders in them. 
they were nothing you know social leaders as such i'm not talking about only political leaders they were not considered as the social leaders of the society and women's domain was home only even the poet like coventry pat more called her as as the angel of home so women were confined into a sobriquet of angel of where angel of home they were confined only in home this was not justified and even you will be very surprised to know friends that with regard to william shakespeare is one of the renowned dramatists of the 16th century elizabethan period and he is a hallmark but even then dramatists like william shakespeare writes in his 12th night i would like to quote women are as roses whose fair flower being once displayed doth fall that very are see you what kind of expression is having and we consider lord tennyson the national poet what does he write man for the field coat man for the field and women for the heart man for the sword and for the needle she man with the head and woman with the heart man to command and woman to obey all this confusion this is written by Tennyson, who was considered as a national patriotic poet of England, and such kind of subjugation, such a one-sided remark by him. Now, Levi Strauss writes, considers this. this he is a very famous, you know, Levi Strauss. This Levi Strauss says, considers that women have always been passive objects. Women are always a passive. passive object in the final decisions of the marriage not only in the marriage i would say they are passive in, in every decision taken in a patriarchal society after that they are, go back to aristotle aquinas and then they all said that that this entire world which is form is masculine this form is masculine and the matter and the matter is feminine so you can see how much biased are their thoughts and ideology and here against such ideologies feminism stands its right now milton even wrote in his poem in paradise lost he writes to quote he for god only she for god in him see what milton wrote that milton wrote Milton wrote that he, for God only, and she, for God in him. The God within me, I am for the God, and the God within me, for that is the woman. It means she has to serve me. This was such a you know, biased statement written by poet like Milton, who wrote certain words. and uh, you know uh, paradise lost and such kind of things now shelley's now what happened that against such writers these are the so called i was talking about social representation against such social representations women writers like shelley's mother in law mary wollaston wollaston craft what she wrote a book the shelley's mother in law her name was mary wool stone craft and she wrote a book a vindication of the rights a vindication of rights of women of women in 1792 she wrote this book and then there was john stuart mill i'm going to write on the top John Stuart Mill he wrote another book and the book's name was the subjugation of women and he wrote this book in 1879 so these works articulated the sense of discrimination created by such inequality between the sexes after this what happened many other literatures many other literary rep representations started to come in the market and to govern the new dictum new rule 
Now, they started to shout, eradicate sexist domination. And though domination was nothing, but now the game was the sperm versus ovum. This ovum nexus. They said that there is a clear cut fight between the sperm and the ovum nexus. And then, goal was to expose the misogyny involved in the literary production and practice of the past. Also, there in the 20th century, some prominent works, to name few, like Virginia Woolf's Virginia Woolf, a room of a room of one's own. She wrote this book in 1929. And after that, Simon de Viola. He wrote the book, The Second Sex, in 1949. See, you can see this book. This is a very a thick volume in which there are many chapters which discusses in detail and this book is not a book, this is a rebel. We can demarcate the entire universal chronic chronological history in womanhood from this book. This is a watermark. So she wrote this book and in this book he had discussed in length what are the different you know, aspects of knowing women. Now there was another writer, Kate Millett. And Kate Millett wrote a book known as Sexual politics. This is once again, if you do not cite these books in your answer, you would not get good marks. Now, Sylvia Platt is another famous writer who wrote a semi autobiographical novel, The Bell Jar. This was the name of the semi, The Bell Jar. It was published in 1963 and the author name was Sylvia Platt. Now, Writing all these things, now there are another book like Joe Clemens' The Bridge Manifesto, which came in the year 1970. Now, after this we have to delve, knowing the history, knowing the inequality, knowing the subjugation of male society, of patriarchal society, upon a feminine or the female society. We have to know where is the you know, gist of literary criticism. Here comes the literary part. And some of the basic issues raised by feminist theory or literary criticism are, you know, basic issues. Four, I'd like to say there are four. First one is they defined Western society is entrenched in patriarchal patriarchal ideology and they are controlled by it and women are kept in subjugation this is the first dictum the second one the second one is men always establish norms and women are defined as the other. Men would define the norm and women will behave like the other. Some entity which is not a part of this world with reference to these norms. Third, third philosophy that talks about the purpose of the basic you know, criticism is that third, that the sex and gender, sex and gender are entirely different, are entirely different from each other. They are entirely different from each other. As I have already told in the first, that sex is biologically determined, whereas the female or you know gender is created by society or culture 
So after knowing the three basic issues raised by feminine literary criticism, we see the fourth issues which is raised by feminist literary criticism is that to know that the end product of feminist criticism is nothing but to promote gender equality. So they started, all uh, feminist critics started to sit together and they tried to bring this world and they tried to bring the cultural uh, representations like films, movies, art directions, art, painting, literature, direct literature like novel, fiction, poetry, everything. All together they started to being written uh, with a purpose to bring the gender equality. Now, knowing this, I would like to make you very clear that that after this was established that there, there is gender inequality and we have to bring the gender equality, what happened? That Ellen Showalter, like critics were there, who discovered four kinds of lenses and they said that if I want to study the total literature of the world, we have four lenses through which we can see the literature. Those lenses are referred to as model. What are those four different lenses or the you know telescope through which it started or a microscope through which we started to see and observe the literature spread all over the world? The first lens or the model is known as the biological model. This biological model tries to identify those kind of literature and try to expose those kind of literature who always try to see women just as a body. This was just biological, you know. They try to expose those kinds of biological lens of the models that I would like to write a fresh here that, that we call biological model means they they started to find out those texts somewhere which mirrors mirrors the body only in the center like there are pulps the second grade literature which always took, took women as a body merely as a body and they tried to expose them and they said this is not a justified thing this is not justified at all now second one is the linguistic model the second lens through which we started to see the world literature is called the linguistic model. And women realized that the language that have been used in those literatures are basically not of them, but something outer language as if they have borrowed from men. Because the language of men is definitely different from the women. That is why they said that the words that is there in the dictionary, the words that is available there in the market is always borrowed and this is high time that we should change our diction also. They cited examples like even slangs like bitches or you know uh, in, in Hindi it is kutya. These are the slangs that we use even being a lady we use that kind of slangs which are in fact we are exactly borrowing from the man world. This is not of our world. That is why it is a high time that we should discover our own language. Otherwise it we feel alienated we throw, we feel like you know we are external agencies. So the third model, which is there, is known as the third lens through which they started to see different kind of literature available, is known as psychological model. They they become psychoanalytic model. When they started to read the text, they find that what was the psychology? Is it the patriarchal society which overruled? their subconscious mind of the writer was he satisfying uh, the characters with the uh, you know, male uh, domination or or uh, there was some any kind of subjugation of women knowingly or unknowingly so they started to enter and delve into the psychologies of the characters and through knowing the different kinds of psychological character and status as for example you know the female writer like you know uh, uh, Emily Bronte when she writes Woodring Heights. Then, what is the psychology behind Catherine when she says, I am Heathcliff? That is the vibration we still feel. So why being a lady, Catherine speaks, I am Heathcliff, and why Heathcliff have never said anywhere in the entire novel, I am Catherine? 
So there we started to study you know, the psychology and the psychoanalytical studies and through that we can easily see the difference between the male literature, male literature and the female literature. Now, cultural model. Through cultural model or the lens we started to study, you know, women not as universal object but they also see ki, the women of Africa cannot be similar to women of India. Women of you know, uh, England can never be similar to the women of Australia so Africa or any other Caribbean island. So they started to form their own diaspora. They started to form their own platforms and in a varied ways, in a micro-analytical way, they started to write and read their literature and they started to write their own literature which discusses women in their different diasporas, you know. So, uh, they, say they, offered, they offered an object collective experience that unites women over time and space that is known as a binding force. Now, coming at, you know, say, saying all these things, I would like to, my friends, discuss before the last point of this, that this total feminist theory broadly chooses two directions. They said we have two uh, dual tasks that we have. First, if I want to study the literature, entire existing literature. Number two, if I want to create another family literature, which are now, uh, which is still to be produced, which is not written yet. So what they do? That let us sit. All the women writers said, let us sit together, or not only women, all the feminists, including men also, sit together. And they said we have two jobs. One job is to we have to be women as a reader and another job is to be women as a writer. So, women as a writer. They said that we don't have to you know, sit silently but we have to start to reread our text. Jodi text available hai, we have to read it as a reader and we have to interpret. So, being as a reader, we have to give the interpretation. We have to give the interpretation of even the classical works. Because since the language is not mine, since the language is borrowed, since it is written by men, you see, as for example, interpretation of classical works as a reader, if I am reading Ramayana, it is written by men, definitely there will be some biasness. Uh, between the character Rama and Sita. Sita will find his job is subjugated. Having a, being a pregnant, she has to be sent into exile. Or she has to go for a one prastha. So, is it as is justified? This question was not coming into our mind. But the women writers, start, the readers started to reread it. And they started to push questions upon, upon the religious and classical text also. Even in a Bible, Holy Bible, it is said that it is written by some male because Eve is always you know, in a secondary position she has got. Even in a Holy Quran, all every religious text is written by male. Still, female dominance is not there. They are still subjugated to pain was, that was not penned by them. So, as a reader, they started to, they started to reinterpret the text. So, reinterpretation. Then the second job which came into the periphery of feminist criticism is that women said as a writer we have to write and we have, do not have to only write as a writer we have to rediscover the lost or the unsung writers they started to bring forth Christian Rossity they started to uh, bring forth many others like uh, you know, George Eliot or many other writers which were not in prominence they bring brought back those writers in prominence and also they started to throw back uh, some new literature in the field of uh, uh, English literature or the global literature where the women were much talked about. So, women and men, it was to unearth forgotten, forgotten women talent score, forgotten women talent came into four and they create a whole body of women and women. Now, Ellen Short Walter says that on the basis of this dual function, what exactly we have to do? Then she started to say that uh, uh, this, this leads to a term which is known as gynocritics, gynocriticism and ultimately under the section of gyne, this is what the two functions that we discussed today is a part of gynocriticism.
we have to go for five things, you know, biology. So, they start you to uh, question biological essentialism. Is it necessary to be female? The premise of patriarchy that is woman is a womb, they said that ki acha should we be taken as a womb only and if I have to take taken as a womb, why to have shy? Why not to uh, get a, uh, you know, uh, celebrate biological features? If I have a breast, if I have a different kind of body, why should not I celebrate my biological features? Why to hide? That is why nowadays, even on Facebook, you see that there are many women who are, uh, you know, uh, uploading pictures of their womanhood. When they are pregnant, they are giving pictures, they are celebrating it. Earlier it was to be, they were hiding themselves. They said, no, we should love our biological status. If it is once clear, we are different from male, nothing to hide, we should celebrate it. Then they started to bring in their prominence, their experience. They said, being a woman is a different experience. And if being a woman is a different experience, why should not uh, I uh, give immense values in life in, as an art? Why should not I project myself as a sublime feature? Uh, there lie uh, vast areas of delicate emotions and perceptions of women. And we are very delicate. So why should not we celebrate our delicacy? So they started to pin down their specific women's experiences, which were not available to men earlier. Like they are also talking about, like, uh, you know, mm, you know, when the time of, you know, mm, menstrual cycle, they started to discuss those things in detail, what happens, why to mm, hide our emotions on those occasions. And that is why they have become promoting one campaign. Okay, we should be very proud being a woman and uh, going through a uh, menstrual cycle process. So they are also rejoicing their experience. Now, in this course, they said, you know, we will be rejecting male diction. We will be rejecting and we will go for our own women's language. That is called women's language. They said, you know, nothing borrowed. We want our own language. So this is called women's language and which is distinctively feminine and in its style and in its essence, in its fragrance, in its structure. Now, we also say that this male society is very biased and very tricky, treacherous. They are also sitting in our unconscious. They say okay, we have a fresh unconscious. We will wipe off all definitions, you know, overloaded by them. We will just wipe off everything, every definition that male wanted to give to us. We just reject it. We wipe it off and we'll have a fresh unconscious. This is what every definitions were vanished, dropped into a regency. They do not they won't accept all these things. Now, last one is the social and economic condition. Social and economic condition. So women, literatures under the school of feminist school, started to discuss their social conditions. They started to discuss their economical conditions. And through those literatures, feminists started to show that how much uh, different world a woman have at two social level and economic level and how much they have been penalized for that, how much they have been subjugated so far, how have they been marginalized so far. So all these things came into fore. So out of this we can say that quite a few works have successfully implemented these rules like Ellen Schwartz's Schwartz's a literature a literature of their own and then Susan Guba there is the mad woman the mad woman in attic then Elizabeth Barry Browning is there Christina Rossetti is there Elizabeth Gaskell is there they were the neglected women talents which were who were discovered under this school, under this you know new study, which is called known as feminist study. So, friends, uh, I'll be the offshoots of this feminism are lesbian or gay or queer criticism or the Marxist feminism or the psychoanalytic feminism, which I shall discuss in the next video. But so far, this much only. But even if you write this much in feminism section, this is the whole skeleton 
uh, of feminist criticism. Thank you very much, friends. See you in the next video.